Hi guys, welcome to the third and final chapter. The Pillars White of the Earth. Ship. She was one of the fastest vessels that was ever built. The man who should be king of the English now, the son of King Henry, was on board when she sailed off. And with the prince there were 140 knights and many nobles, all on their way from Normandy to England. They say the ship hit the rocks, and then a fire broke out. Even before the white ship had departed, the prince and his men had begun to drink and get violent. Monks that were meant to bless the voyage were then forced to disembark. Some say the ship had been cursed. The king's son and many of his family were pulled down into the Black Sea that night. You're forgetting one important detail. Not only these monks, but also Stephen of Blois, the king's nephew, left the ship before it embarked. They say he got ill. That old rumor. The same Stephen who calls himself the King of the English now. What? That cannot be a coincidence. Yes, it can be. Of course he's king now. He survived. He is the king's nephew. What do you think, my lord? I think Stephen is a clever man. Clever enough to have his whole family perish. But why he would want to rule that godforsaken rock, I will never understand. What makes you say that? I love my country. Then why are you leaving? Well, because I want to see something new. I'll tell you what you're going to see. A proper country, where people know how to behave. What about you? Why are you leaving? Eliana? I had no reason to stay. I'm looking for someone. I had no reason to stay. That's more vague, isn't it? I had no reason to stay. Really? Huh. Uh, I, I guess I should stay out of other people's business. Forgive me. You English do talk a lot, don't you? I just don't know how to feel about leaving my country for the first time. I mean, how should anyone feel? Hopeful, excited, desperate. Um, you'll see what happens. You'll see what happens. I don't know. Maybe I'm just running away. The sound of the seagulls, brilliant. You should all get some rest. It will not be long now till we reach Sherbourg. Thank the Lord, I can't wait to be back. Here we go, the credit sequence. I thought, where's the music gone? Weird. Here it is. Awesome thing. Matt Kempke. Kevin Mance. Kingsbridge Cathedral. Jack. Jack, Eliana, Philip. The three main protag protagonists we can control in this game. And that's the game we're playing. I finally know its title. <laughs> Book three, The Eye of the Storm. Chapter 15 The Journey Cherbourg, Normandy In the late summer of 1142, I had left so a year my later. country, England, for good. 
My old life lay in shambles, as did my former home of Kingsbridge. Having failed both my friends and family, I had set out to find my baby's father, the man I still loved with all my heart, Jack Jackson. <laughs> and so early one morning in July, I finally arrived Beautiful. on Look the shores of Normandy. With nothing on me but a pouch of coin and a young, curious face yet unnamed, who was just as unfamiliar to this new world as was I. The White Ship. The sinking of the White Ship, 1120. The White Ship was one of the fastest ships of its time. It was steered by the son of the captain of the Mora, the ship that brought William the Conqueror from Normandy to England when he invaded in 1066. Like his father before him, the captain of the White Ship gladly offered his vessel to many members of the royal household of King Henry for passage on their next travel from Normandy to England to visit the king. But like all of the poor souls who went aboard the ship, the captain did not survive the voyage. In the dark of night, the ship hit rocks and a fire broke out. The ship was dragged down in into the dark abyss of the sea, and with it, many of the king's heirs. Stephen of Blas was meant to be on board as well, but it is said a sudden sickness caused him to leave the ship before it set sail. That November night, as the white ship sank, Stephen became the last remaining male heir to the English throne, and thus, some claimed he was responsible for the sinking. Right. Let's go, this place looks cool. I took the first ship in the morning, had to get away as fast as possible. I recognise these tools. A mason like Jack. Heard there is a lot of fighting for that castle. The ship wouldn't land there. Let's talk You're to this still guy. here. Oh, it's you. I'm just trying to get my feet used to good solid ground again. The last bit of our voyage wasn't exactly my pint of ale. <laughs> I'm looking for someone. You're a mason, right? That hammer you're carrying, do you happen to be a mason? Actually, I am. You have a keen eye, mistress. <laughs> I guess I just know a mason when I see one. To be honest, I haven't been one long. Just finished my apprenticeship in Salisbury. Before that, I used to shear sheep with my parents, but I guess that wasn't really for me. Father still hates me for leaving, though. Where would a mason go to find work? What will you do to find work here as a mason? Don't know. That's for me to find out. All I heard was that the wages are better over here. So right. you'll just travel from town to town and look for employment? I can't get over how good this right. looks. And I'll looks start to say, a fellow mason told me about the abbey there. He said All these painted. build Fantastic. their churches quite differently than we do back home. I need to see that with my own eyes. Maybe learn a thing or two. Maybe Jack went to see the Abbey in Lassay. Do many Masons go to Lassay? Do many Masons go to Lassay? Ah, I don't know. It's really just a tiny town. The Mason who told me just happened to do some repairs there once. It's likely he told others as well. I left my old life as well. I left my old life as well. Scary, isn't it? To start off fresh and all that. Well, you definitely sound more excited than scared. Oh, I am excited. Wouldn't anyone be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't really want to say that. Leave. Have a safe journey. Oh, thank you. You too. I don't know, man. I just... I don't want people to know, really. Hello, sir. Sat on the beach. For a moment I thought, but it's not him. Good day. Oh. I am looking for someone. A traveller who came through here last summer. <laughs> oh, hush now. I, I need to talk to this man. Looks young. He was born at the beginning of summer. What's his name? I haven't given him one yet. You should. He needs to know who he is. Makes growing up a lot easier.
You said you're looking for someone. He looks a bit like you, actually. The man I'm looking for looks a bit like you, actually. <laughs> a bit more boyish, though. So he has red hair, but no beard. <laughs> well, I don't know every redhead around these parts. There are quite a few of us. Most of my family here in Cherbourg is ginger. Oh, wait, his name is Jack Jackson, and he is a mason. Hmm. No. No, sorry. I haven't seen him. And I come here every day. Or maybe a May saw him. She helps the sailors get their cargo to the nearby towns. Carries travelers, too. I'll ask her. Well, thank you. Okay, that's the end of that, of that exchange. Is this a market? They're bargaining for passage. Doing business with the English must pay. If I can get in here. It appears to be her coach. She must know her way around France. Hey, you. That's quite a bundle <laughs> you got there. Where are you headed? Have you seen a red-headed mason? Have you seen a red-haired mason? You must have landed here sometime late last summer. <laughs> Another ginger in Normandy? I wouldn't have noticed, even if he was carrying a hammer instead of a fishing rod. <laughs> Maybe you should ask someone in Barfleur. That's where all the travellers come through, the Barfleur, pilgrims say. and kings. Okay. Their lot rarely lands in Cherbourg, with the fortress passing back and forth between Stephen of Blois and Geoffrey of Anjou. Why you even came to Cherbourg in the first place baffles me. It was the earliest ship I could get. You must be in some hurry, madam. Let's just say I needed to get away before I changed my mind. Fine with me. Who am I to judge? Maybe in Barfleur someone saw Jack. What other routes are there? Right, so this what is the way out of the village. There? Right, Besides so like a fast travel thing. Barfleur. Okay. Oh, I don't know, really. You need to ask the locals about that. But Barfleur sounds like a good place to start. Shake my hand and I'll take you there. Do you know the road to Lassay? Do you know the road to Lassay? Lassay. Been there, seen it. But I hope you're not planning to go there on foot. Tell you what, you give me some coins and I'll treat you to me wagon. You can even change your destination once we're on the road, what'd you say? Leave conversation. Travelling by coach is a lot less strenuous than walking. Indeed. Your little worm deserves some warmth <laughs> worm. and a rocking carriage. They're selling fish. And what of the cargo they can get their hands on? Can I go there? Wow, oh, so this is the only... Okay. I guess that's it then for this area. Changed your mind, madam? You know, I reserved a cosy spot just for you. I'm ready to leave Cherbourg. All right. Take me out of town. All right. Where do you need to be? <laughs> I'd say let's go to Lassay. Lassay first. Lassay was tiny, but as it turned out, worth the trip. In the small abbey church of the Trinity, I met a monk who claimed to have talked to a man fitting Jack's description. He'd been fascinated by the abbey's rib vaulting and had asked the monks countless questions about the place's construction. The monk apologized that he couldn't tell me where Jack had traveled next, but I didn't mind. I lay down to sleep on the floor of the abbey guest house and, for the first time in almost a year, I felt relief. As I drifted into sleep, I hugged our baby tight and whispered into his tiny pink ear, We're going to find your daddy. Aww. Le Mans and Michelle. Oh, wow. Make a stop in Le Mans. Orleans. 
Going Saint to Denis. Le Mans reminded me of all the trouble I'd left Saint behind Denis. in England. Thirty years ago, Le Mans had been conquered by the Plantagenet Geoffrey of Anjou, Maud's husband. And although they'd held it ever since, other noble families kept on pulling at the city, like Maud and Stephen tearing at England. There was no sign of Jack, but I got news of a new kind of cathedral being built in Saint-Denis, just north of Paris. <laughs> it was possible that Jack had gone there to learn from the craftsmen. That was, if he hadn't travelled further south, looking for work in one of the many churches in Tours, the hometown of Saint-Martin. Saint-Martin? How could I not? Oh, I should have gone to Mont Saint Michel. Hmm. Let's go to Paris. New Orleans. North of Paris, I visited the construction of the great cathedral of Saint Denis. It was far from finished, but already I could feel its magnificence. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. I assumed if Jack had come near Paris, he would have ended up here. Unfortunately, I was wrong. No one among the army of masons raising the cathedral of Saint Denis had known him. My stomach churned when I realized that my strenuous walk to Paris had been for naught. Maybe Jack went to tours. After two months on the road, to us, Central France. Two months on the road. Hello. Ask anyone around if they have seen Jack. Like the ones Tom used to make back in Kingsbridge. Everything feels so far away now. You and me both know, being a mother is not easy. Aren't they usually round? Never seen them like this. Just like in Kingsbridge, although the design looks very different. Almost from another world. Seems self-assured. A bit of anger on his lip though. Important looking man. Good day, are you the master builder? What is it? I'm looking for a mason who may have passed through here. An Englishman with carroty hair. <laughs> he calls himself Jack Jackson. Hmm, a redhead? Yes. Did you see him? He might have asked for work here. No, no, I I'm not looking for new masons. We're just doing repairs. Ah, but was he here? No, never seen him. Now, stand back, woman. Something could fall on your baby's head. Are there construction sites around Tours? Are there other, other, other construction sites around Tours? Well, yes. It's a big town. And where would an outsider most likely find a job? Dunno. Ask around. You hesitated when I mentioned a redhead. Hmm? You hesitated when I mentioned a redhead. Are you sure you haven't seen him? Yes, I am sure. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Why won't you tell me what you know? <sighs> all right, all right, he was here. Was working for me. But I had to throw him out after two or three days. Why? Because he was all want, want, want. Let me redesign the roof. Let me make the nave lighter. All pretty ideas, but he never shut up long enough to do the work he was supposed to do. Shit, that man was almost as needy as my son when he was still a brat. Mm, he does know a lot about his craft. Well, I know masons like him. They grow up gifted, but without a moat of discipline in their guts. Can't work with someone like that. Do you know where he went next? No idea. Maybe to Limoges or Angoulême. 
Maybe even to La Rochelle. Seemed to have plans for every cathedral on God's green earth, but none for himself. I understand. I'll leave you to it, then. Bon voyage. No luck. Well, we found out something about him. Hmm. What looks nicer? Yeah, let's go to the lower We had just good. left Tor when I suddenly felt dizzy. I stopped and made rest, trying to catch my breath, then lost my breakfast in a ditch at the side of the road. Oh, no. To my horror, our baby, too, had grown pale, his breath shallow like that of an old man. I tried not to panic, but the next inn was a long distance away, and we couldn't stay on the road where it was wet and cold. Right. Head back and rest. Back in Tor, the fever got worse. I remember people carrying me into a room, laying me on a bed. I tried to feed my baby, but after that, everything turned into a blur. When I awoke, Jack was standing next to my bed. A fever dream. He scolded me for following him. You know you could go anywhere you want, he whispered. Why be stupid and follow me? I tried to answer, but he just opened the window and jumped out, heading toward ancient Greece, or maybe all the way to Arabia. And in my feverish mind, yeah, I followed fever him. dream. We're going into a dream sequence. Okay. Nice. Uh, Greece or Arabia? The birthplace of philosophy, the birth cradle of civilization, Arabia. This is cool. The further I went, the angrier I got. For years, I'd been fighting for my family. I'd committed myself to an oath to my father. I'd built up a business to sustain it and even married a man I despised so I could create a future for the people around me. I'd know nothing but my duty to the men in my life, while the man I was trying to find live a life of casual irresponsibility. He travelled the world on a whim to learn about mathematics and philosophy, while I had to raise the child he'd fathered. When could I ever do anything just for myself? I asked the world as I went on. Kingsbridge, a site of great failure. This is pretty awesome, though. Well done. I travelled in a circle all the way to the edge of the world and back, only to return to the place of our failure. With my eyes closed, I listened to the sound of ripping yarn and crumbling walls, and of coaches carrying good people away into a cloud of crimson dust. Ooh. When the last moat had settled, I opened my eyes again and found myself in a dirty little room. An old maid was sitting next to my bed and smiled at me, then handed me my baby. Oh, dear God, he still looked so pale. Mm -hmm. Feed him. I tried to feed him, but he refused. Oh, please, God, let him live. Don't punish him for my own sins. I gently caressed his head until Damn. finally he put his mouth to my breast and drank and drank more and more, becoming greedier with every swallow. We had both been spared. Nice. We rested one more day. Then I gathered my things and headed back to the cathedral to thank the Lord for his mercy. Damn, man. That was heavy. I need to thank the Lord for sparing our baby's life. Thank you, dear Lord. 
All right, steady now. I thank now. you for having spared my child. I thank you for... Don't let go until it's done. But why are you showing mercy on me? I failed everyone I cared about. Uh -oh. I failed Jack. I failed my brother. And if I never return, I would also break the oath I had given father. It's just... It's just that I feel like I've never had a life of my own. I've always fought for others. And this may be the very first time that I fight for something that I only want for myself. Maybe I should just go back and help rebuild Kingsbridge. Maybe Jack doesn't even care for me anymore. Amen. Huh. I've seen one of those before. It's amazing, isn't it? The man who did that really had it in him. Had what in him? I had what in him? <laughs> the spirit of a true Mason. It's a shame that the master let him go. In just one month, he did so many things. What did he do? What did he do? He came up with ideas for how to make the construction easier. But the master didn't want to hear it. To tell you the truth, everyone thinks that he feared for his own job having someone like that around. The last thing Jack did was carve that corbel. Chuck. It was the one thing the master let him do. Then when he was done, he was asked to leave. Your master said he had no discipline. Your master said he had no discipline. <laughs> let me tell you something. Jacques worked very hard on it. He was impatient and had a temper, but you could see that he tried to overcome it. Conquering that rock was very important to him. Oh, I understand that so well. Do you happen to know where he went next? He wanted to walk the pilgrim trail to Santiago de Compostela. The <laughs> Camino? The way of St. James? He said he might find someone there who knew his father. Just one more thing. How was he when he left? Hmm. Never thought about that. Relieved, I guess. He seemed ready for something new. Thank you so much for your help. Think nothing of it. And good luck on your travels. May you find what you are looking for. Cool. Headway, headway. Far away. Isn't it odd? Just when you stop looking, you come across the most curious of things. Like these three devices that one of my merchants brought back from Baghdad. <laughs> oh no. Is it another one of your Banu Musa toys, Rashid? Wow. They're Fantastic not toys, place. Adriel. They're objects of so scholarly cool. ingenuity and reflection. I will let the my street has gone into this is the fantastic. North do the honors. There he is. The music's beautiful. Jack, if you may. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to leave it here. We'll do this tomorrow. Good night. Thanks for watching. For Good night. One.